in this module we're going to cover the principles and foundation for Zig the Zigbee protocol. This module really is designed to give everybody an overview of the approach that Zigbee uses from a radio and a, a Mac layer, but more importantly to actually go and look at the structure of the payload that will then be used within the IoT fundamentals. So the, the Zigbee protocol itself is a, is a very well-defined standard. It's been around for a number of years now, and it covers almost everything that uh, it requires to connect sensors and devices into the e IoT ecosystem. So if you actually look at the, the key layers that are involved within the Zigbee protocol, we have the, the network layer. So this, uh, this is the, the layer that allows us to connect and handle all the things like routing and multi-path propagation as well as handling all of the security aspects required to ensure a, a safe endpoint to to protocol connection to to provide security safety and uh, encryption then we have our mac layer which is obviously dealing with uh, the more lower layer interfaces so this is dealing with the routing of of packets and the mac layer uh, coordination for the end of end device and for the sensors. It uses a, an 8-byte EUID or an address, very much like a, a MAC address within the Ethernet world, but it's it's a little bit bigger because obviously we're dealing with a much much larger quantity of devices. The MAC is also taking care of all of the encryption that's going on within the uh, the Zigbee network. So it uses an AES 128-bit key to to do all of the encryption that is set up and managed by the the network and the MAC layer. It also does things like association and disassociation of devices within the network. So as devices join and leave, then we need to be able to handle that uh, within the, the confines of the Zigbee network. And then we have our PHY. So our PHY with Zigbee is running on a 2.4 gigahertz. So it's in the standard 2.4 unlicensed spectrum. Um, it uses a PSK with a 250 K bit per second, four symbol, 62.5 uh, K board data rate. So it's not a particularly high data rate but it doesn't need to be a lot of the times this is Zigbee's not used for for transferring large quantities of data it's really about low latency and event triggering or data transfer it does use a, a CSMA 16 uh, 16 uh, array orthogonal modulation to ensure that we don't have overlap or, or to deal with uh, errors on the network and we're obviously dealing with uh, a number of channels within the Zigbee band so you know it may be in the 2.4 gigahertz range but we have a lot of two megahertz channels to allow us to ensure that we don't have interference and and contamination of the spectrum so one of the key things to look at when we're looking at, at uh, the zigbee protocol is actually what we call the zigbee clusters so zigbee clusters are really a uh, a list or a definition of the device and capabilities and these are defined as part of the zigbee specification and the zigbee standard and they they provide a number of different groups of clusters and these can be really defined as you know general clusters or we have measurement and sensing clusters lighting heating and ventilation closure safety security energy and then we have some things like commissioning and over the air type of clusters as well the key thing these are these clusters are groups of commands and capabilities that a sensor will subscribe to or publish as part of its uh, its operation so part of the the definition of a sensor manufacturer will define what is my product what radio am i using what clusters am i going to support and then how does that payload fit into that uh, that cluster so if we take a, an example you'll have uh, a device with a standard set of cluster features and then some identification clusters and then the actual functionality cluster so if we take a look at some common clusters that would be provided by a manufacturer, they would include things like the basic cluster. So zero is the basic cluster. We then would have a cluster that would define the type of power that that sensor would use. We have a cluster for the identity. So the manufacturer and you know any specific user identification information would be provided in a different cluster. And then some clusters might also have groups or scenes within that device, and they may use those clusters to to allow themselves to coordinate with other devices from the same manufacturer or from the same class so that they can communicate between each other. So these clusters become quite powerful in allowing people to clearly extract information about the capabilities of a device. On top of the standard clusters, we would also then have a group of vendor or 
device specific clusters so for example if we're building a light switch or a an on off type class we would use uh, the on off cluster which is six which defines the attributes that to detect on and off configuration we if we were building a light bulb then we would use the le uh, the level cluster or eight to allow us to change the brightness of that light bulb or to report the current level that that light is set to we can use if we were again a bulb we could use the color cluster so that we could allow ourselves to be changed or to report what color we are if we we're a door lock we might use 101 cluster and again there is a new cluster fairly new which is called the IAS cluster which is used for security and alarm notification which is on 500 so again we can build up the groups of clusters that our sensor can support just by adding these different clusters within the sensor capability one of the key things here though is we're not going to go into huge depth about clusters we're going to pick one or two to focus on but you can actually go to the NXP website and get a full list of all the Zigbee clusters and their capabilities from the link below so if we take a device as an example and we actually break down the capability of that device so we if we take a water sensor and actually take a look at what that, that sensor's capabilities are it will have its basic clusters so it will be reporting its you know its its basic capabilities its power capabilities and its identification in this particular case though this sensor might is an IAS zone device so it would use a Zigbee cluster 0500 so we know that when it reports a message from the sensor through the access point and into the I IoT controller and it reports a Zigbee cluster of 500 it, we know that it's an IAS zone device Th within that cluster it will also report a zone type field which will be of a, a, a value which in this particular case it will report 2a now 2a directly maps to a water sensor so just by getting one message with the value of a cluster 500 and a, a zone type of 2a we know straight away that this is a water sensor that is reporting its current state then within that we have actual values and alarm values so for example with the specification alarm value one indicates for a 2a water sensor in a zigbee cluster 500 that there is a water overflow indication so by looking at alarm value one and its current state we're able to detect whether or not there is a water or a flood that that sensor is reporting so again if we look at a, this common sensor this is a samsung smart things zigbee water sensor we know that if that sensor reports a value of uh, 20 or 21 we know that that will either be showing no flood or flood accordingly so it becomes very simple for us to look at that value to look at those that uh, that data and see how the, that data actually maps in so 20 on report 2 uh, which is basically uh, the the alarm mapping so again we can look at our our bit mapping on the right hand side so bit 0 is our alarm 1 that is showing either a 1 or a 0 so one indicates that the zone alarm is detected and zero is no alarm is detected. In this particular case, uh, bit, bit uh, or bite, uh, nibble, I should say, two is indicating report two, which in this particular case is, is not, not applicable. And we can do the same thing here now for a, a door sensor. So here we're actually going to now walk through the message and actually extract out all of the information that we need to decode a, uh, a Zigbee message coming in, for, for example, from a door sensor. So one of the first thing to do is to look at the incoming message. So here we have a message that has arrived. Now we brought this into a rules engine so we can put it into a nicely formatted data structure, but we can actually see in here all the information about that device. So we have its, its uh, network MAC address. We have a, an IoT epoch telling us the last time that that device was seen. We have the report of what that, that device is saying that it is. So it's reporting that it's a simple sensor. We have some device tags. We can also see that that device is currently connected into our IoT controller. It's a Zigbee device, and then we have a whole load of protocol information about LQI, RSSI, and information about the rest of the network. The key thing, though, is as we look at that, is the uh, obviously the device EUID, but also the what we call the device Z a Zigbee capability. So this is where the information about that sensor is is actually stored. So we can extract that, expand that out now and look in there and we, we get two pieces of information so for this particular device we get a value of one which is the endpoint id for that particular device 
Um, and we may have multiple endpoints. So as we add more capabilities, we may have more endpoints within a single device. But this device only has a single endpoint. And it's reporting two clusters. So we have a cluster 0000, which is our basic cluster, and a cluster 0006, which is our on-off cluster. So this particular sensor is actually providing us with a door or a contact state using the cluster 06. So we can now open the cluster 06 and we can expand it out further. So as we look into cluster 6, we can now see the attribute ID and the attribute name. So you can see here the attribute name is listed as on off. Um, in this particular case, it's a door sensor and its current value. So the door sensor is reporting 00, which means that it's closed. So that will then change to 01 as the door sensor opens. So with this, we're able very quickly to, to take a look at the message from the incoming payload from our controller or from our Zigbee device and actually extract out all the information about that device and the current state. So we get the endpoint ID, the cluster ID, the attribute ID and the current state. So now we have that basic information about that, we can actually directly ask the IoT controller the specific, specific information about that, that sensor. So rather than having to trawl through all of that data and find the specific data or the value of that, that door state, we can actually request the information directly from the IoT controller. So we can send using our API, which we're going to cover in a later module, we can send a, a request regarding the specific device that we're interested in. So it's device EUID, the cluster, the attribute and the endpoint ID. And by sending that to the IoT controller, we get a response directly back, you know, a much easier to read format with the value. So again, using a, a standard JSON structure request, we're able to now see the door state uh, as a one or a zero directly. Now we can do exactly the same thing with writing to devices using Zigbee clusters as we can to reading from a device. So the same principle applies. The only difference now is that we use a command attribute to read or to write the, the, the output with a correctly formatted uh, message. So for example, if we take a light bulb and we want to turn the light bulb on or off, we can use exactly the same information. So we need to know the command. So we're going to use the, the Zigbee cluster command on off, which is a standard Zigbee command. The endpoint ID. So for this particular light bulb, the endpoint ID is three, whereas for the door sensor, it was one. The cluster ID. So we're going to use the on off cluster and the command ID. So the command ID uh, in this particular case would be zero zero means turn the light bulb on. Zero one would be turn the light bulb off. There's also some extra parameters that we may or may not need to send depending on the command that we're sending, but we need to present it even if it's an empty uh, empty field. And this is basically what the command would look like. So we, we format a message. We, we give it the command ZCL on off. We give it the endpoint ID, the cluster ID, the command ID and the parameters. And when we format all of that together and we send that to the IoT controller, the IoT controller will use that information using the Zigbee cluster and the Zigbee commands and turn the light bulb on directly. So one final thing on, on Zigbee is Zigbee is an alliance. It's a, it's a conglomerate of, an, of a number of global partners and companies that are working together to define the Zigbee capability standard clusters and, uh, and working together to, to increase the adoption. Comscope is a very active member of the Zigbee Alliance. We are a participant level active member, which means that we are actively involved in the technology roadmaps. We're developing the test and certification for the technologies, and we get early access to all the specifications and the testing code. Now, this really helps us as we start to increase the capabilities and add more Zigbee uh, capabilities into the IoT platform. So what it means is that we can add all the new Zigbee clusters straight away, but it, it does mean that we, we limit ourselves to purposefully from supporting non-standard clusters. Now, non, the, within the Zigbee specification, there is the mechanism to define your own clusters and your own endpoint attribute IDs. So it is possible for, for a lot of devices out there that even though they say that they are Zigbee, they may not adhere to the standard. Today, we do not support those devices, but we will be adding that capability at a future date uh, to be defined. 
So as we as we go forward, though, one of the key things is that the, the latest IoT controller is using the latest IoT uh, or the latest Zigbee version 7 specification and stack. We will continue to adopt the latest specification and Zigbee cluster capabilities as they come forward and as they're supported within the uh, within the Zigbee standard. Music